rather than making a level L in reading. For level three, they will have to complete all the daily reading, assi daily reading assignments, and they should read three books and make an independent reading level of level I, J, or K. If you notice the difference there in the reading, it's just by the reading levels and just one book away from level four. Now, if your child needs improvement, this is what's happening here. They're only completing two books, and their independent reading level is a level G or H. Whereas if the, the other need improvement link says if they're completing daily reading on my own or Raskit, one book or less, one book or less, less mean that they're not reading any at all. And their independent reading level is a level F or below. So uh, if you look at those levels one and two, you don't want them to be there. So you could try and push them a little harder to make those threes and fours using these information you're getting. All right, so we're going to move along and we'll notice that the same thing is going to apply to all the other subject areas. Two categories of promotion there, needs standards and needs improvement. And Ms. Alexander, I just wanted to say one more thing with this. For this level two, you'll see it's split. This is probably going to be a student by student. Um, we're going to have to take it student by student and see if they're going to meet students who need improvement based on the work that they've been submitting or they work with us in small groups or what they've been doing throughout the whole school year, not just in remote learning. Not just, yeah. Oops, sorry. Thank you, Ms. Edwin. Yeah. Okay, and the same thing we are noticing here in the writing. In writing, it's only two categories, meet standards and needs improvement. In meet standards, it's split between levels three and four, and in needs improvement, it's split between levels one and two. Again, I'm going to point out that for a level four in writing workshop, your child has to be turning in all assignments, not just now on remote learning, but they must have been doing that all year also when we were back in school. So we are combining everything. They must have made a level four on all of the on-demand assessment, and they're turning in classwork along with that. For a level three, they're completing all the on-demand assignments with a level three, and they're doing all of the classwork. If you see in that category there, there's just a difference of one point. So, you know, if your child is at a level three, you could easily well get them over the bump to make a level four. For needs improvement, we see again, Miss Me and just Ms. Petrowitz just spoke about that split there. For children who are at a level two, they could be a, level, a high level two, so not very far away from making a level three. So if you notice, they have to be making a level two on the on-demand assessment. That level two could be a high one, or if it's low, you know, we could see the difference in what the child is showing. It has to vary from one child to the next. We have to see the level of work. And they have to turn in all classroom assignments. For a level one, which we hope that none of the children will have to call you know, they are not uploading their work, and they are only making level one on their writing on demands. Okay, moving along, listening and speaking. And also, I'm going to go back a little bit for the writing. I know we're going to be meeting with them for small groups for whatever they need help with. So if we're able to get them over that little bump, moving those high level schools into the level threes, but make sure the children are attending all of the group work that we are doing and submitting work. Let's move on to listening and speaking. For listening and speaking, we see there, there are two categories as well. It's only meeting standards and need improvement. For meet standards, it's split between a level three and four as well. 
children are able to express their ideas with clarity. They're using a wide range of academic vocabulary when they're talking. And they're using appropriate right mechanics in spelling and grammar when they're listening and speaking. Level three and level four are quite similar if you look at it. In written assignments and class meetings, students have to be able to express their ideas with clarity. Meaning, hold on one second, Miss Alexander. Someone has their microphone on, and we can hear your yes. outside conversation. Please turn it off. Yeah. That was distracting. Sorry. Okay, guys. So we're back at the levels three and four for listening and speaking. When the children are writing whatever they write and they're expressing in their writing, it should make sense. I'm going to bring it down to a point where you could understand it. What they write should make sense. Their, their mechanics, agreement of subject and verb should make sense. Their spelling should make sense. Now, the spelling, children are using invented spelling sometimes, but if we can read what this word is saying, I'm, I'm hearing a noise in the background again. If we can read the words that they are spelling, even if they're not spelled correctly, but they're making sense. So I think I need to mute someone so I can mute some microphone. Sorry, I had to mute someone. So yeah, I had to as well. All right. So if their writing is making sense, whether the spelling is correct or not, the sounds of the word they're writing should sound just like the word they're trying to write and do make sense. So that's what we're looking at. Academic vocabulary is whatever vocabulary we as teachers are teaching the children and they're supposed to be using as they're speaking to us. I'm going to give you just a quick example. For example, if we're talking about a story, children should be able to use words like, I did a sneak peek. Sneak peek is one of the vocabulary that they would be using. I write my title. Title is a vocabulary word that they should be using. Okay? So those are just examples of when they're speaking to us and expressing it using the relevant detailed and academic vocabulary. If children are talking about a story, for example, they should be able to mention things like the elements of the story, the characters, the setting, the problem, the solution, and lesson learned, if there was any. So all of those come with meeting the standards for level three and four in listening and speaking. For need improvement, it would mean that they are just minimally expressing their ideas and facts and details. They use minimal vocabulary, meaning they're not using the vocabulary words a lot that we are using with them. And so they might need more of that. So, and also for level one, if they're not really using the vocabulary at all, but they're just saying things in their own words without using any of the vocabulary that we use. And in their talking about books, they're not mentioning things like the elements in the story, the characters, the setting, the problem, the solution, and if there are lessons learned. All the things we do in reading workshop and read aloud with Miss G and writing as well. All of that comes into the listening and speaking. Moving right along, Miss P. In our science, we have the same two categories of grading. We have need standards or need improvement. There's no talk of failing there. For science, for meeting standards, the children for a level four has to complete all weekly 
science assignments with the 85 percent or more on the unit science test miss ellen yes just so that they know science and social studies have the same requirements so we can do those together together good so on both of them, science and social studies, for me standard, your child has to complete all of the weekly science assignments. And they have to turn them in. And also, they have to make an 85% on all of the tests, 85% or more, for a level four. And for a level three, they're just making like a 75% up to an 84% on all of the unit science and social studies test. But in a level three, if you notice, they're turning in all assignments too, so make sure they're, and um, for social studies, they're doing the same thing. They must turn in all assignments. And if you look at levels one and two, there's a big difference there. For a two, you know, your child might have been a high level two in both the science and social studies, if they're completing one weekly science assignment and they're making a grade of 50 to 74 percent on all of the unit tests that's science and social studies now look at level one they're not completing any weekly assignments and they're below a 49 percent wow that's like one point away to make a 50 percent don't you think or even going beyond the 50%. So I would push my child hard enough to get them past there and make sure they're turning in their assignments every week. Moving right along. So anything there to add, Mrs. P? Not about science and social studies, just have to do math next. So let's move on to the math. It's in the middle. Okay, good. So now we are looking at the math, and we see also that there are still same two categories of grading, meeting standards and needs improvement. Back to meeting standards, is split between a level three and a level four. In order for your child to make a level four in math, they should be getting I'm not seeing that so clearly. Okay, I can do for math. For so math. if you notice, math. for level four, they need six points on every weekly quiz that they take. They'll need to complete every exit ticket that we give and send in pictures for their teachers. And they'll have to do at least four or more lessons every day on Dreambox. We say three Lessons is a level three, but kids can go on Dreambox and complete many more than just that requirement. Also, on all our end of unit assessments, they have to get an 85 or higher. For level three, they get um, five points on those weekly tests. They complete most exit tickets. They do the um, minimum of three lessons on Dreambox and on their um, post assessments they get a 75 to 84. Again for level two it will be on a student by student basis if they're going to be meeting standards or going to be in the needs improvement section. They need to be getting three to four points on their weekly math tests. Remember these tests are something you have to click on on the slides on Friday. A lot of parents are forgetting to do this or having their child do this. Um, so if there is no work done for that, we're going to have to put in a zero. So make sure you're always looking out for that test. I know some people are having technology issues. So again, that's why it's on a student by student basis. They do some of their exit tickets and they complete only two lessons on Dreambox and they have an average of a 50 to 74 on their end of unit math test. The level one is not where we want to be. So I'm going to skip that part. Exactly. Okay, and parents, this is so very important. On our slides every day, we have that daily success criteria almost at the end of the slide before you get to the very last part of our daily slides. And it tells you just what the children should be doing to score their 100% daily. 
Now, if you look at that pie chart right there, you'll notice that for that 100%, the children have to be attending. 10% just goes to attendance. That's a very small portion. And then the other parts of the pie is split 30, 30, 30. If they're completing all their requirements on RAS Kids or my own three books or more, they're getting a 30% for that. If they're doing their dream box requirements and they're fulfilling that daily, they're getting a 30%. And if they're turning in their work, pictures of their required work for each day, that's 30%. Now, right there at the daily success criteria, right after the last box where it says, I sent pictures of my work as required that day. On each slide every day, there is a list of things right beside that that tells you what subject work the child has to turn in for that day. If you read the daily success slide, you will know exactly what to turn in. We are having a little difficulty because children are not turning in the correct things. They're just putting things there at random. So I want you guys to be careful. Read what's written there every day and know what the child should turn in so you could have them work on it and turn it in before anything else also so if they completed all of those things on the pie there daily attendance ras kids or my own three books or more dream box three lessons or more pictures of the work that they should send in for that particular day then they have their hundred percent for that day and you so, might have missed that some of your children are getting like partial credit because if they only go on Dreambox and complete one lesson, they're only getting 10 of those 30 points. If they're on Raz Kids and they only read two books, they're only getting 20 of those 30 points. So that's why some of the numbers might look that way. Yes. So please, um, guys, please focus on that daily success criteria. Now, let's move right along to the next part. One child, one device. If your family does not yet have one device or a tablet or a laptop for every child in your family, you still have time to request one from the New York City Department of Education. All right, the information is there for you. So if you really need another tablet or a device, you should reach out by um, using the information on the tab that's there. We will be sending out this PowerPoint at the end of the presentation, so you'll be able to click on all of these links and look at them at your convenience. Right. This is a little video um, that we're going to show you, and it's about summer reading loss, so what happens when kids don't read over the summer. However, this can apply to us using remote learning as well. Um, it's just a quick two-minute video, so please pay attention so you can see how important and why it's so important for your child to be reading each and every day. Let's look at two children, one from a home that had lots of books and one who didn't have access to books. They head off to kindergarten, and the child who had lots of books starts kindergarten with a six-month lead in school. The student with no access to books is far behind due to the lack of early reading experiences. During their year in kindergarten, the two students learn at the same rate, so we will move them forward nine months. But look what happens in the first summer between kindergarten and first grade. The child that reads at home moves ahead a month because of the continuous exposure to books and other educational experiences. The child with no access to books falls back two months. So when school begins again, the gap between the students has already widened. During first grade, the children move ahead at the same rate. That next summer, the student with access to books continues to grow as a reader and moves ahead a month, while the students with no access falls behind another two months. We come to second grade, and the two children grow at the same rate, but the summer after second grade sets back the child with no access to books back another two months, and the gap widens again. By the third grade, the two children are already far apart. By the end of fifth grade, the gap between the children is two to three years. The gap will keep growing through middle school. 
So you see, if we don't work together and provide our children with lots of books and other educational activities throughout the summer, it is impossible to catch up and impossible to close the gap. No matter how much high-quality learning occurs each school year, without summer reading, every year the gap will widen. Alexander, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? No, just to say to the parents, you know, now that they listen that um, very important slide, to know how important it is for them to have the children reading every day and right through the summer and not let them lapse because that could put them way back before they get back to school in September, to keep them occupied with reading every day. So moving right along there, we see that there are some COVID-19 resources and you guys will get to, in your own convenient time, to explore some of those things. There are some links there, a lot of different links for support. I would um, encourage you parents to make use of those if you need them. You know, we could all use help sometimes. So just search through and see what things you need and then, you know, reach out by clicking onto any of those links and getting the help and the resources you need for your children and for you as well. And I want to say at this point, thank you guys for the great job you are doing. I really appreciate you. We are so happy to have you on board with us through this remote learning. And thanks for all the encouragement that you give us also as teachers um, while we are helping your children and our children as well. Oh, All right, parents, this is a time where we're going to be answering any of the questions that people have written to us. Your questions can be anything that's general. Um, we can't answer by kid by kid basis. So, for the kid by kid basis, you could reach out to individual teachers, you right. know, and we'll deal with that in private because we don't want to discuss parents' private business with everyone listening in. So one of the questions we had is that students um, have been, for the question, if students have been taking tests online, they have been taking tests for like all of their subject areas. So if you haven't done any or gotten any grades back from your teacher, I would definitely reach out to them to find out what they're missing. Okay, I'm also I'm looking through for some other ones. Yeah, I have a question here. If kids will still be able to use that same login information for Raz Kids, Myon, Dreambox, all of that will still be available to you over the summertime. Um, I have a question if there will be summer enrichment for first graders. As of right now, we're not sure what the DOE is going to provide for those kids that need it. Um, it's still very new to us. So that one we're going to have to get back to you once we get closer to the summer and uh, DOE as a whole kind of makes a decision towards that. And remember, if you have any other questions while I'm talking now, you can type it into that chat box at the top. Yes, we still have time. Um, I have another question that says, if my child's missing lots of work, will he be able to get the points back when they turn it in? So we were giving points back at the beginning, but right now it is very much a routine, and this is classwork, so it's due daily. Um, just like if they were in school, they wouldn't be getting credit if they weren't doing the work. So it needs to be submitted every night by midnight to get credit for the work. They should be doing the work and turning it in um, late if they have to, and you're, you'll have to speak with your teacher because we understand that like, maybe you're sick one day and you need the weekend to make up the work. Um, so again, that's going to have to be on a case-by-case -case um, basis, and you're going to have to speak with your individual teacher. Yes. Also, make it transparent. Like, tell us. like, my internet is down today. We've all had that problem. Yes, um, we do. <laughs> 
get your work done, if your internet is down, it's not going to happen. And if we know about it, then we can make those um, extensions for the children as needed. Yes. And may I add something, Miss Miss Petra, with um, this week, for example, this week some of the kids have not turned in their week work yet for Monday and Tuesday. You know what I would do today? Try and let them make up for those two days this week. I sent. I, I know some of the teachers did this, and we all sent out reminders to parents whose children didn't um, do Monday and Tuesday work. You know, it's good to do that. These current things that just passed, I would have my child make that up real quickly today and turn it in, and they would still get their grades. But anything like way back in March, so, you know, at this point it's too late. So I would try to get the things that are current, that are missing, and really have my kid complete all of those and turn them in this week and we could still award them their points so that was actually one of the questions we got miss alexander is if um mm -hmm. um if they have to make up the work from the first few weeks of school so we gave every kid like a two week don't you don't have to make up work kind of thing because yeah. we're all getting used to it the teachers ourselves so don't worry about those first two weeks where we were online learning um again it depends your child was getting a DOE iPad when they received that iPad um, for us to hold them accountable for the work. We know yeah. that a lot of kids weren't able to get packets at the beginning, so we can't count that against them. We know that some kids weren't able to do some of the work because they didn't have an, the device for it. So again, if that's something you're worried about, I'd reach out to your specific teacher to make sure that they're getting the credit for what they deserve. Um, I have a question here about, will the DOE iPads, are they getting Dreambox on them? So we have put in a request for Dreambox to be added. That's why we asked for all those tags on your iPad. Um, if you did not send in the, the tag on the back of your iPad to your teacher, please do so. If we don't have that tag number, we cannot get Dreambox on it. So that is something they're currently working on right now. We sent in all of that information to the person that's in charge of that. Yes, so hopefully really soon Dreambox will be on those iPads. Um, another question we have is will we be getting progress reports before the end of the year report cards? So the answer to that is yes. They're still working on what that progress report is going to exactly be. So hopefully within the next few weeks you'll be getting a progress report. Um, I have a question about until what time can they turn in work? Um, the work is due every night at midnight, so right before it changes to the next day. Again, if you have a problem or something where you can't get it done, um, reach out to your teacher, let them know what is going on and why that work was not submitted. Um, for Get a Level 4, does she have to do Dreambox, uh, four lessons on Dreambox? Yes, so Level 4 in the in the success criteria was at least four lessons. Four lessons, okay. But it doesn't mean if she does four lessons, she's getting a level four in math. It just means that she gets that smart thing. She still has to be able to get that 85 or above on her math test and get the six points on her math um, review quiz. Um, so another question was, does that first month of work count? They did the work, but they never sent it in. Um, I'd reach out to your teacher because for most of that first month that we were online learning, we were not counting. Like, we weren't doing that deal test criteria out of 100 points. Yeah. Um, when will we be getting report cards? Um, I'm not sure what the DOE is going to do for that, uh, how they're going to be sending them, but they will be getting some sort of report card. Let's see what happens to you. Are there any other questions? All right, parents. Well, thank you so much for joining us today and doing like so much work for your children. You all become teachers. Um, so our hats are off to you. Yes, and I'm so proud of you guys. You really kept us going. Thank you very much, and thanks to all the parents who also reach out to me knowing that I had some things going on in my life. Thank you guys for reaching out and for encouraging me. Thank you so much. I love you. 
Uh, we have one last question, and it was, will anyone be getting left back? So if they are in that section that says, um, what is it? They could be promotion in doubt, which means they would be left back. However, we're going to have to go case by case on that. And in, se in September, I believe the children will have a chance to take a test to see if they can move ahead. Just if you're nervous about your child getting left back, just make sure you are working, 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 and reaching out to your teacher for extra help and assistance at work. Can I come in? All right, everybody, that's everything from us. Thank you so much for all your help and support. Okay. We appreciate you all. Yes. Um, up. All right. See Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, Sunny Bye. Bye. See you guys soon. <laughs> Bye.